Fallout 76 just have their biggest update of the year, the release of Skyline Valley, which was released this past Wednesday. This update not only includes an expansion to the map below the Ash Sheep and Savage Divide, there is a story questline as well added to this DLC, and it also provides two new events, a new boss fight and a very hard event. Please note that I never played the PTS server so most of this stuff is brand new to me. This video is practically a review of what I have experienced for the first time. I streamed this the other day so please follow me if you want to see more any future live stream and possibly joining me when I live stream. To sum up this review, in a quick terms while going into details, the update is straight fire, in a good way actually. As a Fallout 76 veteran with having many hours in this game, I say that this is one of the best updates that Fallout 76 ever gotten since Wastelander and Nuclear Winter. So time to go a bit more in depth into this review. So what is up guys, welcome back to the Bondro Gaming Channel and welcome to Skyline Update Review. I want to start this review off with my complaint because it's not really a lot, it's a very small detail. One of my main issue is the story breaking issue. There's one time where the story will never proceed. I do not want to spoil it because it's actually pretty close to the ending. However, to summarize it, the NPC was supposed to open the quote unquote door. However, the door never opened and it's like I basically have to leave the game and go back in just to get the door fixed and open. This type of issue does break the game and it breaks the story mode and you know it just kind of ruins it. So I do recommend Bethesda if you do see this review I do recommend that you guys take a look at that issue and try to get that repaired in the future updates. Second issue is a more cosmetic complaint. See one of the new helmets you get in the game is the Vault 63 Riot helmet which look good when crafting it however putting it on make your character look cross-eyed and just make them look goofy. Like, it's a small complaint, let me be honest, I'll still wear it because it looks good, I mean, it nice, it goes well with this outfit. However, when I look at my character eyes, she just look like this, like, <laughs> I don't, I know the fact it's not intentionally that he's supposed to look goofy, but <laughs> it just, he just looks like this. My third complaint is a weapon, actually, or well, some of the weapons and cosmetic that was introduced. See, there is a new two-hand weapon in the game. You first get this weapon from the story mode. It's called the V63 Zero-Hander. I don't know if I said that correctly. See, I thought this weapon was going to be a brand new two-handed weapon. It's actually pretty cool and pretty strong. However, it turns out as a new variation to the Plasma Cutter. Now, let me be honest. I did not know this. I actually thought that this was a brand new weapon that we can graft and legendary craft into a legendary as well. However, you can't even change the legendary effect on it. This is a bit frustrating do not get me wrong this is a pretty strong and awesome weapon to use like even with the legendary effect that it has right now it's still a pretty good weapon however it should be an option for us to reroll this this weapon is practically it's an own weapon and it should have its own mods to it it shouldn't be like a variation of the plasma cutter i think like a plasma cutter long sword will be a cool weapon to have in the game and this is one of the mods to it i just don't understand why we can't reroll this why this is not considered its own weapon and the same thing there's some other issue i have as well with the cosmetics because you can see like the riot helmet vault 63 armor the riot event armor is actually an outfit and it's also cosmetics there's no new armor sets or no anything i really do think it was a missed opportunity by bethesda and the developers behind this dlc that they should have added a new armor set new power armor sets and stuff like that to this game where players can actually benefit this and look towards to and grind towards to. A lot of weapons and armors are just cosmetics or weapon variation. And I think that's just kind of sucks. But they're just sort of taking advantage of this update and added some more items to gold bullions or more weapons to the game that players can legendary craft and craft as well. You know, I just think it was a missed opportunity really with some of the weapons they introduced. And that's literally just my third complaint. Now let's talk about the pros of the DLC. The story is actually pretty good. Let me be honest with you, it's not so boring and it actually is really interesting. When it came to the climax of the story, I was actually shocked by the twist. I can't really go into detail of the stories as I really don't want to spoil the story for you. I think it's best for you guys to experience this for yourself. However, I will be posting these videos very soon of the stories 
of my reaction and stuff i'm actually going to be editing it right now this video is just going to be coming out first because this is an actual honest reveal to you guys uh so please stay tuned and prepare and be prepared for the story going on this channel so please consider hitting the subscribe button so you can stay updated for that all right all right my second pro is the two new events are good there are both hard events which is you know a pro player like me and a lot of players right now that are considered pros at this game are veterans you know we is a very they're both hard events and something to look towards to because sometimes we deserve to have a challenge in this game dangerous part-time is an actually it's actually all right event it's a good hard event but you know it really doesn't cap my interest it actually gets overshadowed a lot by the new boss fight neurological warfare which is actually an amazing boss fight the fact is that this is a three boss fight in one arena it's actually pretty awesome each of the boss have a unique variation to them so one of them suits fragmentation grades the other one suits plasma mines and the, next, the other one suits cryo mines i mean i think that's pretty unique that all of them is different in some partial in some ways they kind of copy it based a bit at least something different to them instead of just fully copying and pasting them uh, the fact that when you defeat one of the bosses in this arena, the other ones get stronger until the last one basically becomes more like a tank and it takes longer to kill them, which is cool. Um, there is robots and the lost, the lost, which is the new enemy faction in this game. They do attack you while you're in there. There's force field that separates you from your friends and from the other robots as well. Making it, you can't suit the force field as well. Again, the arena feels cool. It's a unique boss fight arena. It's not instant based, I think, because I think everyone could join the boss fight anytime. I think this is actually a cool take on the boss fight. And honestly, the Neurological Warfare, I really do think is a really great event in this one. It feels very rewarding. Both of these events feel very rewarding. The rewards that you guys can get for these events is amazing. I think they're worth it sometimes to grind for. And I, I do think that both of these two events really does add a lot to the end game content, especially like with the Neurological Warfare warfare since they're all three bosses are all legendaries you can get three legendaries reward gain benefit and you can gain a lot of benefits from just gain three legendaries from one event and you know it's not that hard again it's but it is quite challenging especially when you had to avoid the grades and the robot does a lot of damage as well if you get i almost died a bunch of times from these robots with their tesla guns so yeah it's a really challenging boss fight i do think it's amazing a lot of people think it's easy i think it's at least rewarding and not that hard but not that uh, easy to do and i think it's actually worth it doing neurological warfare than scorch beast or earl williams neurological warfare is actually the best boss fight events now since you could get possibility of not three but four legendaries from these from this event alone the map expansion itself is actually amazing i love how this place feels very unique and stands out from the rest of the map the red storm in the middle of the place is very unique and cool how it turns your vision how basically the atmosphere all becomes red like you're inside like a hell type of place it's very cool it gave me like the sierra madre vibe if you guys ever play new vegas dlc and then you will go around sierra madre how it feels red and rustic it kind of just gave me that little bit of vibe from that and i really do think that was a unique atmosphere that they had it in the update the hidden lore in this part of the map is cool as well i do recommend you guys checking out the pioneer summer camp in the bottom of the map is as something sinister is happening there and i don't want to say more but that shit blew my mind when i discovered what was happening there the laws which which is the new enemy faction that was introduced in this DLC and Vault 63 gave me a lot of sci-fi vibe. It was all like a science experiment. It gave me like it just like for some reason it gave me some vibes from the DLC Old World Blues. If you guys ever played that DLC from New Vegas, it was like a big testing site, science site. Well, a lot of experiments has gone rogue, and I feel like that's what Sandoa was. There's a bunch of experiments gone rogue. Like the laws, the storm, it's really crazy. And I the lore behind it is really cool. And you know, it all takes place in a national park, which again, I think it's cool is that because all take place in a national park. Place feel so unique and so different from all the rest of the map. And that's what's interesting. They could just copy and paste it like the forest, make it all green and stuff like that. But no, they really went far and beyond with this update and try to make this uh, this new region feel more unique than the rest of the other map. And it, I think that's what's great about this part of the map. It feels different. It feels new. And like when you go into this new part of the map, it, you could totally tell it's like it's so different from the rest of the map. Some of the cosmetic that was introduced looks great as well. I mean, I again, I'm not talking shit about the cosmetic. Even though some of the, um, some of the cosmetic may give your character a goofy look. Besides the weapons being a unique variation of already in-game weapon you can't reroll, they're actually good and useful. 
However, one of them is pretty heavily nerfed from the PTS, the public server. So yeah, I know a lot of people are upset about that part. Overall, I will say the Skyline Valley update is actually a great expansion. This is an expansion I actually did enjoy it and always wanted for Fallout 76. At, an expansion where it just like doesn't, we don't need to teleport somewhere else, go to an instant, an expedition. It feels, because again, I feel like expedition could have been something better, but this is what Fallout 76 deserve a, a map expansion, a place for us, uh, for people from Fallout 76 that played there since the beginning. We could have more to this map, more rounding. And I do hope, I do hope the developer behind this game or the DLC, both Bethesda and Double Eleven, take some feedback of how good this expansion is so we can have more type of expansion like this in the future. I'm gonna give this expansion a 95% on the Brondo rating scale, which is, you know, very close to good, not perfect. You know, let me be honest with you, there is some, again, like there was some issue I have with this expansion, story issue breaking. Like I said, I think it is a missed opportunity to introduce new weapons and new armor set with this DLC. I feel like it would have been better if the v63 zorahander had his own weapon i feel like the ryan arm the right armor outfit would have been better if it actually was armor instead of cosmetic again it's a really big missed opportunity as well the story breaking stuff can be annoying it can be annoying in the end because let's be honest no one wants the story flow to be broken it just feels bad game design and i just want i just want to make i just want to enjoy the game i just want to enjoy the story and i feel like if bethesda take care of those i feel like this update would be more solid but you know, in the end, Bethesda games, you can't be sure when the story can remain stable without breaking on you at least once or twice on you, you know? However, this is just my opinion. So in the end, I want to hear your guys' opinion as well. What do you guys think of this expansion? Do you guys think that this expansion has hit the home run for you? Or was there some part that fell short? What do you think should have been added to this expansion? Let me know down in the comments down below. And while you're down there, maybe consider hitting the like button as well. If you like this video and want to see more, please consider hitting the subscribe button as it does support the channel. Anyways, I do hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you guys back in the wasteland. Peace out.